Yeah. You guys were into a discussion. It's good to see you back. Glad you. you're feeling better. I saw your great granddaughter. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to say, boo, y'all. You can start. Ring the bell. You can start. If y'all get the uh, big red hymnal and uh, turn to page 45. 45? Page 45. 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 Do that. 
Yeah, we growl, yes. I'm, Charlotte, I've actually heard you growl. It's pretty awesome. Very wise, yeah, she might throw something too. <laughs> yeah, right. But I'm going to tell you, now, I pick on Charlotte. Don't don't get me wrong. I love Charlotte, and I know Charlotte. She's, she, is, she is tough. She is tough. And she tells me exactly what she's thinking a lot of times, which is a blessing to me because then it helps me. But I want, and yes, Charlotte, I gave you a compliment, even if it was kind of a backwards one. I just want you to understand that that's what we do. That's what God has called me to do. That's what God has called Brother Richie to do. Uh, to anybody, what, is what he called Brother Howard to do. Amen. Is that we're going to teach the truth of God's word, even if it doesn't make you happy or if it even doesn't make me happy. Because I'm going to be honest, there are a lot of times where I'm reading and I'm going, Lord, I don't want to do this. I don't want to teach this. I don't want to bring this up. Can we just skip that chapter? Can we just skip this part? But that isn't what he called me to do. He says, you just go down, you, 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 you just shoulder in, and you just keep going. And my word is not going to return void. It's not going out void, right? You're going to get stronger for it. You may not appreciate me, but you're going to get stronger for it. So, before we get started, uh, Travis, open us up with a word of prayer. Lord, we just come to you this morning. We thank you for this day. Thank you for our church family, Lord. And we just thank you for the opportunity to be in your house, Lord, and hear your word. And I pray that you touch Brother Chris this morning, Lord, that you would touch his heart, Lord. And Convey the words through him, Lord, that you want us to hear, Lord, and I pray that you prick our hearts and that we would apply it to our lives, Lord, and um, just take your word and uh, out into the world with us, Lord, and be a light for you. And we just pray for the messages this morning and everyone that's going to be here, and we just love you and thank you for all you do for us. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 Okay, last week we were talking about, we, we, we talked about a few touchy subjects. We talked about liberalism. Okay, and and it talk, and I'll, I'll I'll quote it there in verse five of chapter thirty-two. And if you haven't opened up your Bibles, go ahead and open up to Isaiah chapter thirty-two. And it says there in verse five, it says, "The vile person shall be no more called a liberal, nor the churl said to be the bount uh, to be bountiful, for the vile person will speak villainy, and his heart will work iniquity to practice hypocrisy, and to utter error against the Lord." To make empty the soul of the hungry, and he will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. Now, we're talking about the liberal, and, you know, of course, we have, there, there's two types of liberals. There's the liberal Christian, you know, there's, there's the liberal religious person. You have a lot of liberal religious persons nowadays. Uh, and then you have the, the, poli, pol, the, the political side. Now, I, they, they work hand in hand, I hate to tell you. The problem is, is when you start compromising on the Word of God, when you start compromising doctrine, you've got to be careful. Because when you're doing that, you're saying God doesn't know what He's talking about, but I do. And I don't think there's anybody sitting here that thinks they're smarter than God. And if you do, then we really do need to talk. Okay, it is, the problem is, isn't with God, it's with us in our pride. And we're, and, and pride is that nasty word, it's, you know, we use it every day, I'm proud to be an American, I'm proud to be a Christian, and then you have the liberal side that says I'm proud to be weird, I'm proud to be different. I am proud to accept things that are not right with God. And they stand up and then they shove that stuff in our face and say, you have to accept it. And if you don't, then you're a hater. It works the same way in the religious side where they come up and they say, well, you know, the Bible was written by men. So, you know, we only have a best guess of what God really said. I always love that part. 
You may have a best guess. I said, you know, I can't worship your God. Because if God was that weak or was that non-powerful, that he couldn't keep his word straight, then why worship him? Why have a God? In that case, I'll just follow after Travis. I like knives. It's all right. And I do. I like knives, Travis. So we talked about the vile person, the liberal, the churl, which, of course, was a ill-bred, ill-reputed, surly, prideful person. Then we went in and we started talking about, you know, that he was starting to admonish women and saying, women, you need to rise up. You need to stop being at ease. You need to start doing the things that God has told you is required of you. And, of course, we went down that road and, you know, I, I, I'm going to write a book on how not to make friends <laughs> with anybody uh, when you're using God's word. But then that was when we did all that to, to 14, and then we I, I kind of stopped there because I could have finished it up in a hurry, but I really didn't want to. Because things are not going to change until we get to verse 15. And in verse 15, Isaiah is telling him, he says, Until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high. In the wilderness be a fruitful field, and the fruitful field be counted for a forest. Then judgment shall dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness remain in the fruitful field. And the work of righteousness shall be peace, and the effect of righteousness quietness and assurance forever. And my people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation, uh, in sure dwelling place, dwellings, and in quiet resting places, when it shall hail coming down on the forest, and the city shall be, a, uh, shall be low in a low place. Blessed are they, blessed are ye that sow beside all the waters, that send forth thither the feet of the ox and the ass. Now, you go, well, that's a lot there. But I'm going to concentrate on the one thing that can make a difference in our lives. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Now in this, and I'm going to put it, I'm going to keep this in context for just briefly for this, the historical part of this, because if people say, well, you know, all this has already happened. Let's go to Joel. Let's go to the prophet Joel, chapter 2. It's right after Hosea. Which chapter? Or Hosea. <laughs> Hosea, uh, chapter 2. And we'll get down there to verse, uh, let's see here. Let me turn one more page. We'll go down there to verse 28. We'll start in verse 28. And it says here in Joel chapter 2, verse 28, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will shew wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and, fi blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. As the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Now he's going to pour out his spirit. Now people say, well, that's already happened. That's already passed. Uh, people will reference to Acts chapter 2. And you can go ahead and just start turning to Acts chapter 2. Because Peter quotes him. Quotes the prophet Joel. There in Acts chapter 2. And let me... Here. We'll start there in verse 15, or excuse me, verse 14. And uh, this is, of course, on the day of Pentecost, and the Holy Spirit has come down, and uh, the people are listening to them praise the Lord in their own tongues, uh, worshiping God, and, the, and uh, expounding upon the wonderful works of God. But there are going to be some in the crowd that are, you know, they're not convinced. Uh, but it says here, it says in verse 14, But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice 
and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, hearken unto my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith the Lord, saith God, I will pour out my spirit. Excuse me, I skipped a verse there. But this is that which, and this is important that you get it, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet of Joel, or the prophet Joel, and it came to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, and on my servants and on my handmaidens will I pour out in those days of my spirit, of my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will shew wonders in heaven above, in the signs in the earth uh, beneath, blood and fire and vapor and of smoke, vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call, upon, shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I want to read just the next verse there, the first part. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Now, I want you to set aside, why is Peter quoting this verse? This is a verse that is going to be during what? The tribulation. Because where do those signs, where do they appear? Where does the signs of the end appear? When the sun is turned into what? Sackcloth and the moon is blood red. And there's signs and wonders in heaven. Okay, we got to get it in context. He's going to pour out his spirit. Now... In Acts chapter 1, go up there to Acts chapter 1, verse 6, it says, you know, Jesus is telling them that he's going to, uh, he's going to depart, but he's going to uh, send the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost to replace him. Because it's important that he departs so the Holy Spirit can come. And then in verse 6, Here's Peter. Here, I love this because Peter's always good, or the disciples are, you know, they're they're all questioning. It says, when they were therefore come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, now this is the mindset you need to have remember. Wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? In their mind, this is the point where God is going to, where Jesus is going to restore the kingdom to Israel. Now that restoration, what time is that? When does that restoration start? Starts in that seven-year tribulation, does it not? Where he begins, because he's got to prepare. He's got to prepare his people. He's got to separate out those that are going to sit there, and he's going to pull out that remnant, and they're going to be ready for him. So this is, there in Peter's head, this is that time. When you get down to it, God has no problem. If, if you read the Bible, when you're reading the Gospels, and you say, well, the Jews didn't believe, but what if the Jews did believe? Do you think Jesus would have died on the cross? Yes. Even if the Jews believed, they, Jesus would have died on the cross. Who would have killed Jesus? Who would have put him on the cross if the Jews didn't do it? Exactly, the Romans, the same people who put them on the cross and put them up there, because if, G, if the Jews had accepted Jesus Christ as the Messiah, as their king, what would have that done? That would have triggered that. There could only be one king back then. Who was the king that was allowed? Caesar. Caesar. There could only be one. So the Roman government would have come in, and they would have done the same deed, and it would have not changed the program at all. But see, there was something, and, G, and, and uh, G, I almost said the wrong name here. <laughs> Richie <coughs> kind of touched on it the other night when he was talking about the mystery. They didn't understand the mystery of the, of the church. They didn't understand the mystery that was going to be the bringing in of the Gentiles. Right. See, that's what I like about Richie. He brings up the mysteries, and then now I've got to sit there and... 
I expound on this stuff. A whole bunch of them. There is mystery, yes. I think you said there was 22. Times he used a word, yeah. yeah. Yes, and they actually yeah. used the word. But as that is expounded. And in this sense right here, when Jesus ascended into heaven and the Holy Spirit came, Peter was giving them, saying, hey, this is the end. This is going to be when the, the, the restoration time where we're going to go through that seven years, the Holy Spirit or the, this is that which the prophet Joel was talking about. This is the power of the Holy Spirit coming down. And everything that was described in there, didn't that kind of happen in Acts? In the book of Acts, as we were transitioning from one, from Israel to the church? Mm. See, it gets deep. And that's why when you read stuff like this, sometimes it's just really hard. Sometimes it's hard to digest. Sometimes it's hard to chew. And that's why I say, if you don't get what I'm saying today, don't get all disgusted or, you know, fed up or, oh, you know, it's just too much for me. Don't do that. Just say, okay, put it in the back of your head, and I guarantee you that if it's not me, then Brother Richie will bring it up, Brother Brian will bring it up, Whoever's up here will bring it up eventually, and all of a sudden, maybe what they're saying, and then you pull that little thing that's in the back, you know, where you kept it and stored it, and go, oh, now this starts to make a little bit of sense. But the power of the Holy Spirit, that's the pouring out of the Holy Spirit. That's what Isaiah is referencing back in Isaiah chapter 32. Now, I want you to understand, what is the purpose of the Holy Spirit for the church? What it, we talked about in context to, the, to what it was to the people of Israel. It was their, it was their way of saying, hey, this is the, there is the sign bearer. Isn't that what he was? Isn't that what they did? They did miracles? Did they not speak in tongues? In other languages? Right? Did they not sit there and heal people? What was the purpose for all that? What was the purpose of the Holy Spirit in healing, and doing what? Go to Mark chapter 16. Go to Mark chapter 16. Let's go to Mark chapter 16. We're going to put all this together. And I'm going to string it right into the church. So we'll go ahead. Mark chapter 16. Every once in a while I get scared because I told you to go to Mark 20. And obviously there was no Mark 20 last time. Anyway, uh, Mark chapter 16, uh, matter of fact, let's see here, um, mm -hmm. okay, starting in verse 17, uh, it says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then... After the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth. Now get this. They went forth and preaching everywhere, the Lord working with them, and confirming the word with what? Signs, Signs following. Amen. Now, you say, well, there it is, right there in black and white. It says that signs should be following us. Okay. Yeah, I know. Isn't that what, but you heard Richie, right? They said they. Because what did they not have back then that we have now? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Wow. Oh. What does the Bible say that who requires a sign? A wicked and adulterous generation. Yes, which would be the Jews. Yes, yeah. thank you. Yeah. First Corinthians chapter one. And you need to underline this because see, people they they want to sit there and they want to apply stuff to us that isn't for us because we are under a different set of uh, of of uh, factors. See. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. Somebody read that to me. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. 
Okay, now we know that the Jews, how many types of people are in the Bible? And I know Brother Richie had a real good lesson on that the other day, or a good sermon on that. But how many groups, according to the Bible, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 32, it says what? There's the, there's the Jew, the there is the Gentile, and then there is what? The church. Okay, and if a Jew gets saved... He is no longer a Jew, but he's what? The church. That's right. If a Gentile gets saved, he's no longer a Gentile. He's what? The church. One body. One body. There is no difference when it comes to that. Now, the Jews require a sign, but the Greeks. Now, what is a Greek? If he's not a Jew, he's a what? Gentile. Ah, uh, he's a Gentile. So we have what? Wisdom. Learning. We learn. What did we learn from? <laughs> Philosophy. What do we learn? What do we learn from? God's holy word. We have that, do we not now? <clears throat> do you know what they didn't have back then? They didn't have colleges, did they? Did they have colleges? They had the institutions, don't get me wrong, but did they have colleges that were for everybody? That anybody could go to because they couldn't afford them back then anymore and we can afford them now. So what happened? In that, they had to learn languages. So all the gifts of the Holy Spirit were signs, saying that I can come up to you when I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. I've been called to be an apostle. I could come up and I could sit there and I can talk to you in, a language, in your language that you will understand, understand and be edified completely because I'm talking the way you understand. I'm not talking to you in a maybe a secondary language. I'm talking to you in your language. So we have institutions for that now. So is there a need for tongues to be automatic? You can go to school. That's why they did. I'm telling you, I came from a Pentecostal background. I remember when they sent uh, 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 missionaries to China. With no training, no nothing, no, the power of the Holy Spirit resides upon them. They'll be able to speak in other languages. They got there. And <laughs> hello, <laughs> didn't work. I've heard and read of, 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 of Pentecostals preachers picking up snakes, rattlesnakes. The smart ones pick up the bull snakes, which look aggressive and that sound aggressive, <laughs> but if they bite you, you don't die. But, oh, I got faith. I got, oh, it just bit me. And then, oh, well, it's all right. I've heard of them picking up uh, de deadly poison, and you know what happened? Die. If they didn't get to the hospital soon enough to get their stomach pumped, they're dead. Hello. Do you get what I'm trying to say here? Mm -hmm. There was a time and a purpose, but the problem is, is when we try to bring it to this time, so what is the purpose of the Holy Spirit for the church now? Let's go to John. Let's go to the Gospel according to John. Right after Luke. We're going to turn to, uh, we'll start in uh, chapter 14. Chapter 14, and we'll start in verse 16, and it says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, now get this, for he dwelleth with you, you get that, he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Now that's a future tense, is it not? Shall be in you. Not right now, he just dwelleth with you, but he shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. And at that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. And he that hath commandments, and ye keep them, and he that loveth me, and, uh, excuse me, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved to my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Now, let's skip on down to verse... 26. 
Matter of fact, let's go to verse 25. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, isn't that awesome that he said that he will bring to remembrance whatever Jesus Christ had said to them? Now, how does you, how do you know what Jesus Christ said? But I know a lot of people that don't believe the Bible. They want to believe some of the Bible, but they don't want to believe all the Bible. And so when Jesus Christ has said something, how can you have bring, how can you, uh, the Holy Spirit bring it to your remembrance if you've not put it in there to begin with. Preacher. Do we understand? If you don't put it, yes, you can sit there and be preached at, and we're going to get to that in just a second, but what is the imperative to, if you're being preached at, what is the imperative to where it's going to be effectual? He can preach but what is my requirement? What do I have to do? Listen. You've got to listen. Hey, go study it for yourself. And then you can go, <laughs> yeah, that's all right. But what I'm saying is if you're not receiving the word, it doesn't matter what he preaches. It doesn't matter what I teach. If you're not receiving it, you're not going to get it. I'm going to expound on that in just a minute. Go to chapter 16. John? Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm just taking that you all just would go there. <coughs> Thank you, brother. Yeah. And I'm sorry. <coughs> and, 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 I don't I'm, know. I it Just, just pick, go it, just in pick here. any 16. It'll be yeah, just, that's right. Yeah, just 16. <laughs> chapter, go to chapter 16. That's all. <laughs> Worst case scenario, right? But now, and starting in verse 5, it says... But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you asketh whether whether go, goest thou. And because and but because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. That means that Jesus has already told him that he's going to depart, that he's going to return to the Father. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth: it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and judgments. You need to know those three things. Of uh, <coughs> sin, righteousness, and judgment. Of sin, he's going to give you the breakdown. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Get that. That's the sin that's going to keep you out of heaven. Not believing on the Lord that's Jesus Christ. Unforgivable. That is the unforgivable sin. That is the sin that is going to, that is the sin of omission. Of righteousness. Now get this. Of righteousness. Uh, because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment. Because the prince of this world is judged. And if you're a follower of the prince of this world, if you have rejected the, of the Lord Jesus Christ, then who is your Lord? Who are you following? Satan. Exactly. So guess what? His judgment is also going to be your judgment. What is Satan's end? Is, are we all going to get reconciled? Is, is Jesus going to sit there and say, I forgive you, Satan? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to redeem you? I think in Matthew 25, verse 40, but I talk to people all the time that believe that, that it's going to be a universal reconciliation. But then I asked them, I said, well, then why is Matthew 25, 41 in there? Why did God create a place for the devil and his angels? Hmm. So let's get here. It says, verse 12 there, it says of the same chapter, I have, not, I have uh, yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. That's right. How be it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will shew you things to come. He shall glorify me. 
For he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are, are mine. Therefore, therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. The Holy Spirit will show you the things that you need to be doing. And you know where you're going to find them? Yes, through preaching, but also through reading. Because, Amen. see, you can only go through a little small portion when somebody's preaching. There's only a little small portion. And, you know, if we come on Sunday morning, you know, you get that, right? You'll get that little portion, but what are you going to do for the rest of the week? Because we just come to church on Sunday morning. Right. It's all right. I know. I've been there. I'm guilty. I'm not. I've already broke my window out for that. And there are times where it was because of work. I had to go to work. But there was also just times that I justified it because I was trying to minister to my wife. You can take it or leave it. That's my excuse. You notice I'm here at night. Yeah. Because I had to change. I had to conform, not to the world, but to what God wants me to be and where he wants me to be. Amen. Don't think I'm speaking out of, you know, well, hey, you're always just been really good. No. No. I'm telling you now, I've been very, very bad. The struggle is real. It? The struggle is real. So we have all these things where we have the Holy Spirit. Now, I want you to go, here's the interesting part. I want you to go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. You heard me say 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Okay, I got you. Okay, just making sure. It was, it's not in the book of John this time. Uh, my bad, I'm sorry. Uh, I've had a good week. We're here for you, man. I know, that's what I'm saying, I, that, and I appreciate that. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Somebody read me verse 19. <laughs> Quench not the spirit. Okay, so now we have the people. Now, we've been in Isaiah. We were talking Isaiah chapter 32. The people are in a state of rebellion. Even though they got a righteous king right now, which is King Hezekiah, they're, they're still in, in, in a state that God still knows their heart. So he's still giving them warning that the Assyrians are, hey, they're coming. You need to be ready. You need to be looking upon me and not upon what you can see, not upon... How, you, you need to depend on me and not on the weapons that you have. Not on your AK-47s, your AR-15s, your, uh, what, your uh, 40 caliber, what, I don't know, I don't like guns. I really don't anymore. I went through my gun phase. I'm done. But, uh, yeah, I know. It's all good when we want to stomp on all the other things, but... He don't want you to depend upon your weaponry. He wants you to do what? Look to him. Look to him. He is your strength. He is your fortress. He will win the battle. Not your little puny weapons. I hope nobody breaks into my house thinking I'm going to be that way. <laughs> it don't matter. Amen. I hope that you're going to sit there and give them the gospel before you pull the trigger. <laughs> anyway. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> if, you wait, if you wait, Chris, you won't be able to give the gospel. I'm messing with you guys. Just calm down. I figure I'd stir up the nest. You know, I, keep, you know I, I, I pick on a lot of people. I don't seem to pick on the gun owners too much. <laughs> so it says, quench not the spirit. I care about the children. That's right. Quench not the spirit. So... We don't, why does he say that? Why is he saying quench not the spirit if we're, you know, I'm going to, I know I'm going to step on some toes and I ask your forgiveness. But if we don't have a choice, if we are, if what we do is just by the sovereignty of God alone and we don't have a choice, then how can we quench the spirit? In order to quench the spirit, you, that means you have to have a choice. Now, the problem is, when Brother Richie's up there 
speaking against, you know, bad language, drinking, you know, the, the normal serial sins that we all are guilty of, smoking, dipping, whatever. I have a tendency on the sins that pertain to me, I, I, I find myself quenching the spirit. I feel be, feeling bad, you know, I, I feel the spirit tugging on me, and I, I don't want to know this. I don't want to do this. When I'm about ready to use... That's right. Explicatives, expl explicit, I can't even say the word. I can say all the other like words. Sounds like Sylvester and Cat up there. But if I use, if I'm using a bad word at work, I find myself, and I know some of y'all don't struggle with that, and that's wonderful. I praise the good Lord for that. I wish I didn't struggle with it. I find myself quenching the spirit. The spirit comes on me. I feel the word coming out. The spirit comes up on me, and I quench. The spirit. What comes out comes up. What comes up comes out. And I'm doing. I I got it. I know. And y'all say, well, you know, you shouldn't do that, Chris. No kidding. <laughs> I know that. That doesn't mean you're not saved. No, no, no I'm not worried about yeah. that. Well, but just... what it means is that it makes my life that much. When I give in, when I quench the spirit, just like the people in Isaiah. Are quenched. That's why he says you're going to have the, the we're going to pour the Holy Spirit out on you. That's the only way you're going to overcome. But now, Christian, the difference between Isaiah is that they were not sealed in the Holy Spirit. Do you know what you are as a Christian who is trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ? You are Forgiven. sealed in the Spirit. Forgiven. You are sealed. Unto the day of redemption, Ephesians you are forgiven. You're absolutely correct, Ms. Roberta. Thank but God. you are Ephesians chapter forgiven. one, verse thirteen. Whoever goes there first, go ahead and read it for me. What is it? Ephesians, Ephesians chapter one, verse thirteen. sealed unto the day of redemption. See, now this is where I was talking yesterday to a young man. You're gonna, I'm not a very orthodox person when it comes to whatever I work anymore. See, I know that's the Holy Spirit there because I know what I used to be. I used to know before I claimed Christ as my Lord and Savior, I had no problem doing anything. I was a monster. But I'm going to tell you, God changed me, and He made it where when I was when I when I talked to these guys, I was doing a locker search yesterday, just yesterday, and I was doing a locker search, and I've gotten into a habit. If I see a Bible in their locker, I pick it up, I open it up, and I have a little discussion with them about the Lord while I'm searching their locker for contraband, and they're all happy that I'm. Well, if I'm paying attention to the Bible, I'm not going to notice the little bit of suboxone that he's got laying right there. But, you know, I'm a good officer. I can see both. Anyway, but I will go through the Bible and uh, the other day, and I was talking, and I said, oh, look at this, you know. And we were talking about being, you know, being sealed. And he looked at me, and he says, you ain't one of those ones that always believes that one around going once saved, always saved, are you? I said, absolutely. I am. Because once you're saved, once you're saved, what is the tense? What's the tense in that in that yes. word? Past. So you're being, you are saved through the finished work of Jesus Christ. 
You know? The finished work of Jesus Christ. And he says, well, what if you kill somebody? Well, I'm a saved, I'm a saved murderer. Amen. <laughs> what do you want me to say? There it is. But I said, why do you got to go to the extreme? Because, see, you're looking for something that you think will separate you from the love of God. And I'm going to tell you right now, when you're in Jesus Christ and you're at, at when you Nothing. truly have. Now, there are a lot of people out there that have what? Professed, who have sat there and said, hey, I'm a Christian, but don't even know what it is to be a Christian. Right. Doesn't understand what it does. And I said, and you're falling into the same category, young man. I said, because you sit there and you say you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I said, you sit there and say that you believed in his finished work, but you then just turned around and said his work was not good enough and was not complete enough because I still got to be perfect. That's right. And when I sit there and turn, and if I sin, or if I die in my sin, well, then you've totally lost the whole purpose because there is no such thing. Because if Christ paid for your sin, Jesus Christ took your sin and became your sin for you. So when God the Father looks down and says, oh, look at that. Look at that wickedness. The Son is making what? He's an advocate, Father. He's covered in my blood. He trusted. Yes, he's messing up. But he's covered. He's covered by my blood. He's put his faith and trust in me. So God isn't looking at Chris the sinner. He's looking at Jesus Christ the Son. Say. And see, and so I sit there and I presented the gospel and I told him what it was to be really saved. And I said, it isn't a license to go out and do what you want. I don't want you to go out and kill anybody. I don't want you to go out and fornicate. I don't want you to go out and do the things that this world says is all right to do. I want you to read your Bible. I want you to go to church. I want you to listen to your pastor who sits there and says, hey, God says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. And the only way you can renew your mind is if you've got your nose in the book. And if you ain't got your nose in the book, then how can you renew it? And if you ain't going to church, how can you not renew it? If right. you don't surround yourself with people who think likewise, how can you renew it? How can you be transformed by it? You have to be, you have to become it. You have to surround it. If I didn't have you as my family, and I just had my work family, I wouldn't be anywhere near is grown. I would have been, I would be a, I'd be a poor excuse. I still am a poor excuse, but I would be a poor excuse to be poor. <laughs> I'm not going to amen that. Amen. 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 We love you, Chris. Oh, I, look, I, like I'm going to tell you, Richie, like I've told the rest of the, everybody else, I said, there's two people in this world I care about what they think about me, and that is God and my wife. God, I'm more worried about. Sketchy, huh? My wife. <laughs> wow. Now, why would that be your response to somebody who says they love you? That, that isn't. Oh, no, 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 Rich. No, Rich. I'm just saying that that doesn't love or hate, because I got people that hate me too. I have a lot more people that hate me than love me, trust me. Uh, so I just kind of made it, you know, I'm sorry, Richie. I don't mean to. I didn't mean to. I will to, hold to, my tongue. You're okay. Oh, you are? Oh, no. Uh, I'm sure you're not going to hold it later. No, no, no. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> but do you understand the purpose of the Holy Spirit and why we shouldn't quench the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit is saying, don't do that, do not go down that road? What do we do? We should listen. But if we're not listening and we go ahead and we do what we want to do anyway, what is that called? You can say disobedience or rebellion. All you rebellious people, woe to you. You sinned against God. Because then you sit there and you're just like, here it is, God, in your face. Because I'm going to do what I want to do 
not what you want me to do. What you have said is wrong. I shouldn't do. But yet, there's the quandary. Isn't that what it says in Romans chapter 7? And I'm going to butcher this, but I'm going to just quote it off the top of my head. The good that I would do, that I do not. The good, the evil that I would not, that I do. Oh, wretched man that I am, who can save me from this body of sin? Doesn't it, isn't it horrible when God tells you just exactly how bad you are and that you're, what, this is what you are and what you're going to do? But you don't have to if you listen. You don't have to give in to the lust of your flesh. You don't have to be prideful and do it your way. If we would just stop doing, I don't want to hear it. Chris, I stopped listening 20, 30 minutes ago. And I'm telling you right now, that's because your pride is blocking your ears. You're prideful. What is our heart, Brother Arthur? Yeah, it's desperately what? Desperately, desperately wicked. wicked. And deceitful it. above what? All things. All things. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. All things. <laughs> Man, God just knows you too well. He didn't just say your heart was wicked. He said it was desperately wicked. He didn't say it was deceitful. He said it was deceitful above all things. And so what have you got on the back of some people's cars? Follow your heart. Ha, 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 good wisdom. Anyway. But if you want fruitfulness in your life, I'm telling you, come in obedience. If you want things to go the way and stop doing it your way and start doing it God's way, I'm not going to say your life's going to be, you know, rainbows and, and unicorns. I'm saying that you're going to have peace with God. You're going to have that fellowship with God that sometimes you don't feel like you have. And maybe I'm just speaking on my behalf because there are times I don't feel like I have a lot of fellowship with God. But when I review and I look and see what I've done, why should God have any kind of fellowship with me? I wouldn't want it. If those inmates were as disobedient as I am, do you think I'm going to have fellowship with them? No, we're going to have a reckoning. You know, where, where Jesus tells his apostles the things that uh, I'll, I'll, the Holy Comforter will bring the remembrance to the things that I have told you. Right. He does the same with us. Yeah. Um, we've read his word, we study his word, and for those of us who do that, and then when you're in those situations, the Holy Spirit is bringing those words to your remembrance yes, he is. to quench not the Spirit, to not sin, to be more like him in those moments. And yes, we all fall quench short. the Spirit. Yeah. We all we have all, quenched the Spirit yeah. and, and have done it anyway. Yeah. Um, but what a great God we serve. Yes, we do. Where sin abounded, this is the other the finishing verse, is where sin abounded with grace. Grace. Grace abounded more. Amen. The grace of God aboundeth more. So, let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you today and we just thank you and praise you, Lord, for being able to be in your word. Dear Lord, a lot to chew on today. And I know I probably didn't present it as well as I could have, but you know what, Lord? I wanted to see what it is, why things don't go the way we want them to in our life. Why we don't always feel like we're in fellowship with you, Lord. Again, Lord, I just pray that you will be, that you will open their, heart, their hearts and their ears to what was said this morning. God, dear Lord, I pray that you will open their ears and their hearts to what Brother Richie is going to bring in this morning's message. Dear Lord, just give us the strength and the tenacity to know that your word is true and that we will not be moved from it, even if it, when it hurts us, even when we feel uncomfortable, even if we feel offended, Lord. We know the offense is not your word, but it's our disobedience. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother.